For the first time in three years, Arlington comes together to celebrate one of America's civil rights champions who would have turned 94 years of age this month. It's the 35th annual Martin Luther King Jr. Observance Ceremony in Arlington. Arlington fire crews battle an apartment fire in below freezing temperatures along Mass Ave this week. ACMI News was there on scene and we have an update. And we told you last week about the leaky ceiling in the Lions hearing room at Town Hall. According to the assistant town manager, the repair work is going to be a monumental undertaking. Get ready soon for some changes up on the roof. ACMI News starts right now. From McLennan Park to Spy Pond, from Poets Corner to the Mystic River, we have Arlington covered, giving you stories that count from people who care. Reliable, trustworthy, dependable. This is the nationwide award-winning ACMI News. For the first time in three years, roughly 300 people came to Town Hall Monday, January 16th, to celebrate the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Hello, I'm Ben Lau. And I'm Summer Maxwell. So glad you could join us. This was the 35th such MLK observance ceremony in Arlington. Town leaders and residents alike paused to reflect on their own actions and celebrate a champion, not just for the cause of civil rights, but of all rights. Now is the time to make real the promises of democracy. Now is the time to rise from the dark and desolate valley of segregation to the sunlit path of racial justice. Now is the time. Dr. King is someone who believed deeply that our nation um, was capable of delivering on its promise of freedom, justice, and equality for all people. Uh, and he not only talked about it, he did the work uh, to help make that happen. And, and that's something that I hope people take away uh, from today, that it's, you know, there are so many things that we can take exception with um, in our society, right? Um, but it takes a very special person, uh, someone who does truly care and love this nation deeply to actually roll up their sleeves to do the work. I think the other thing that's important, why it's important for me is because these are, these are people who uh, truly inspire and they don't inspire because just because of their words. I mean, he was an eloquent speaker and an amazing writer. But my God, the, the power and the courage, you know, I think about people like him and just the courage that they exhibit to, to do what they believe is, is just amazing. I, I can't imagine having that courage. I would like, I aspire to have it, but I don't, I don't and then they're just, they're, they're inspiring because of that, of so much of that, that they're so willing to take such an enormous risk. It was just in the 1960s that, this really took off in the U.S., um, the civil rights movement, but we've got a long way to go. And every little step, every little piece of work matters. Um, you're not going to change everyone, but hopefully as we continue this work and do more systems work, that'll start to eradicate some of the racism we see. We have been blessed through him, which means that the work needs to continue. And as we go along and as we progress, we realize that there's more there's more that we didn't even know before, and there's more that has to be done, and that includes all people who are marginalized, all people who are, who are, uh, who 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 feel that they do not have a voice in the United States of America, and those people need to be given a voice. And it's important. It's important for all of us to recognize that there's a lot to do, there's more to go, and uh, but to to recognize the the awesome weight that we have on our shoulders uh, and, and the privilege that we have to go about doing this and this was due to Martin Luther King providing that type of privilege of foresight and vision. He was so ahead of his time in terms of what you know all of the gaps that um, we have in this country to realize what we all learn which is you know um, 
which is equality for all. What Martin Luther King, what he was able to do seamlessly was provide the tremendous spiritual insights that the Bible, um, that he studied every day from the Bible and seamlessly work them into the fabric of our of our wider community and work into all the issues. And if we're able to understand and recognize that this, this divine idea of all men being equal and all men coming from Adam and Eve and therefore every single person should have the correct, the, the, the justified equity that they were born with, the justified equality that they were born with, then this idea, this beautiful idea runs through the fabric of, of our thinking and should run and, and therefore he was able to, to marry uh, religion and state to a certain degree, religion and governance in a way where religion wasn't imposing but religion was actually inspiring. He was a simple man. Um, you know, he's not someone who sought to lead in this way. In many respects, historians tell us he was thrust into uh, this work. Um, and so he also demonstrates that ordinary people can truly do extraordinary things. Um, and so I hope that each individual, each person who has the opportunity to, who takes the opportunity to observe today, really does think about what they can do to contribute to our communities, to help make them better and stronger, mm -hmm. and that we believe in ourselves that we actually have something of value to offer. We must forever conduct our struggle on the high plane of dignity and discipline. We must not allow our creative protests to degenerate into physical violence. Again and again, we must rise to the majestic heights of meeting physical force with soul force. And the marvelous new militancy which has engulfed the Negro community must not lead us to a distrust of all white people. For many of our white brothers, as evidenced by their presence here today, have come to realize that their destiny is tied up with our destiny. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. would have been 94 years old this month. ACMI was proud to carry this event live on our YouTube channel. If you were unable to attend Monday night, you can see the rebroadcast on our government or public channels, or just go to our website, acmi.tv. Police are warning all Arlington residents, if someone approaches you with a quote to do some repair work, and it just doesn't feel right to contact them. Police say three relatives, Peter, Richard, and Patrick Gilhoney, preyed on an Arlington senior, quoted him $200 to fix a crack on his front steps. According to the police report, the three then ripped out the steps without the victim's permission and quoted him $6,000 for repairs. Captain Richard Flynn says these alleged scams are happening all too often, and generally the victims are senior citizens. This is going on really all across the Commonwealth. So typically what, what these individuals do, they'll, they'll search neighborhoods, they'll look for a home, uh, typically owned by an elder, uh, a senior, and uh, they may find some small repair that they might want. They'll come in with a small quote for a repair, like in this case, you know, a small repair on the front steps. And the next thing you know, they destroy the steps or they do some sort of damage to a chimney or something that's rather expensive for them to fix. And then, then comes the big quote and then they're hoping to get checks to get that work done and once they receive either one or several of those checks, off they go. They take their tools and they're gone. And apparently this gentleman uh, paid them and that's money lost. Yeah, he did, he did, but uh, 
what he did do is he was able to provide us with some good information. We had a phone number. Our detectives do a nice job. We, uh, we, little roost. We bring these individuals back into the community, and uh, then we're able at that point to be able to do a show up with the victim, and we're able to put three people into custody, which was very nice. Can't stress this enough. If anyone has any questions, or if you feel, if you have a gut feeling that this transaction just is not, yeah. it's going south quick. Yeah. Call the police. Call the police department. And, and, and in the end, you know, I hate to say not to be trusting, but, but you really have to be careful. And, you know, those deals that come up that are usually sound too good to be true, they, well, they're not. So if you need work done on your home, well, you go out and you find a contractor that's going to do that work. And we have resources here where you can check uh, for companies that are out there that, that are registered and licensed and whatnot. But if you want to have work done on your home, you go out and find a contractor. The ones that show up on your doorstep, knock on your door and say, hey, we got a great deal for you. Well, they're probably not. All three men have been charged with malicious destruction of property, larceny, unlicensed operation of a motor vehicle, and a number plate violation to conceal identification. They were arranged in Cambridge District Court January 13th and were released on bail. And if that wasn't enough, a Boston man was arraigned in Cambridge Tuesday, January 17th, after police arrested him in connection with an alleged home improvement scam. 23-year-old Jack Clark was charged with larceny by false pretenses over $1,200 conspiracy and unlicensed operation of a motor vehicle. The Arlington victim told police that two men, one of whom was identified as Clark, quoted him nearly $15,000 to paint his basement. When work began, police say they allegedly destroyed part of the basement foundation and then convinced the victim to pay them nearly 70 grand for repairs. They also wrote several checks for a portion of the full amount and they were allegedly cashed by Clark. Clark was arraigned in Cambridge District Court on Tuesday and released on personal recognizance bail. The town's former inspectional services director repeatedly violated the state conflict of interest law by allowing his plumbing company to do work in Arlington without permits or inspections. This according to the State Ethics Commission. In a news release from late last week, the commission alleges that Michael Byrne, who retired from town employment two years ago, created fraudulent permits for plumbing work his company performed, inspected his own company's work, and issued a certificate of occupancy for a property owned by a developer who lent Byrne money. Byrne was the owner of Trademark Plumbing at 1337 Mass Avenue, which dissolved late last year, and was director of the Town of Arlington's Inspectional Services Department from 1997 to 2021. The commission goes on to say Byrne violated conflict of interest laws and could face a civil penalty of up to $10,000 for each of the conflict of interest violations. ACMI News tried calling Byrne at his posted number. The line has been discontinued. Arlington firefighters were on the scene of a fire that broke out Monday afternoon, January 16th. It happened along Mass Ave, just across from the MyRack car dealership at 1160 Mass Ave. Fire crews told ACMI News that flames apparently broke out in the bedroom area of a basement apartment. No word on what may have started the blaze. Traffic had to be diverted from Mass Avenue onto Burton and Forest Streets while fire crews contained the flames. No one was hurt and things were under control in a matter of minutes. No word on the extent of the damage. But the next day, what appeared to be some charred padding and household goods was strewn on the parking lot. Chief Kevin Kelly tells ACMI News an investigation is pending. Last week on ACMI News, we told you about significant leaks in the ceiling of the historic Lions hearing room at Town Hall. In fact, the recent rains we've had have caused significant water damage to other areas of Arlington's iconic building. Assistant Town Manager Jim Feeney is in charge of assessing the damage, coming up with ways to restore the structure to its original state, and finding out how much this massive project is going to cost. Alas, as you've noted, there's a significant amount of water damage here to the ceiling and starting to spread, uh, you know, sort of across the ceiling and potentially down to the walls. The ceiling at the Lions hearing room is not looking any better. In fact, 
Town Hall is beginning to reveal its age inside and out. The immediate concern is that water is now leaking from Town Hall's clock tower into the upper structure, which has been a cause for concern for quite some time. The first temporary measure is to close off the lion's hearing room indefinitely and then assess what appears to be extensive damage. This would be not only a pricey endeavor, but something that would take a significant amount of time uh, just in terms of recreating and reproducing the various building blocks that make up what is a really ornate architectural piece, right? This is, this is our civic center, right? It's been in service since, I think, 1912, so over 100 years, and it was largely uh, donated to the town at that time and designed by a, you know, very renowned architect. So, you know, we do have a, a duty to maintain sort of the history and look of this space. Jim Feeney says just getting to the troubled spot to start repair work is a monumental undertaking. Jim Feeney says once the particulars are hashed out, this is going to be no easy fix. For example, there are basically two ways to get to the clock tower from Town Hall. From the outside, you have to get to the roof via the Town Hall annex, eventually get to the clock tower, which is no easy feat in and of itself, remove one of the clock faces, and then enter the clock tower that way. The other way is just as daunting. One would actually have to climb a ladder above the stage here in the auditorium and then walk a wooden plank, which is no more than 10 to 12 inches wide across the entire length of the auditorium ceiling, across the hallway that I'm inside above, and finally arrive inside the lion's hearing room above the ceiling, of course. As if that wasn't enough, at the end of your journey, you'd have to crawl through a very narrow space, no more than a foot high, to get to the clock tower. Quite obviously, the creative souls who worked on this building more than a century ago never heard of vertigo or claustrophobia. Feeney says clearly this isn't just a simple job of spackling, caulking, and painting. How much is this going to cost, or is that simply just too early to tell? Uh, at this time, you know, in working with an architect to develop some uh, cost estimates, our best estimate right now to sort of stop the bleeding, if you will, and that is to sort of remove catalog and roof over the space is around uh, 385000 So we have an application into the Community Preservation Act to fund... Uh, that sort of initial phase that will help prevent damage from spreading within the building and also prevent any uh, accident or catastrophe as a number of elements that make up the clock tower are cracked and portions are starting to chip off and given its height above the street you never know uh, where something could land if, if from wherever it may fall from. Uh, yeah, now you're talking about uh, 300 plus thousand just to take it off and then mm -hmm. cover the roof. I guess it's just too early to tell with everything, all the unknowns up there, how much it's gonna to cost to refurbish and restore. I would agree with that. Though, you know, we may have some preliminary cost estimate figures. The way I've been looking at this building and, you know, hoping to begin the discussion with the Community Preservation Act Committee is looking more holistically at the envelope of this building in its entirety. We have a, a number of failing windows, uh, the, the roofs are starting to fail, so there are a number of elements on the exterior facade that need to be addressed, including you know chunks of masonry that are starting to fall off the limestone walls. So I think that you know now is probably the time to not only think about preventing further damage, but come up with a plan for how we restore the entirety of the exterior of the building over time. The building has stood for over 100 years and served us remarkably well, and the decisions we make now are, you know, similarly going to be 50 and 100 year decisions so we need to do it well and we need to do it right so that it continues to serve the community for you know generations to come there are places where water is expected even welcomed at arlington's 110 year old town hall this is not one of them for acmi news i'm jeff barnd this is an ongoing story with many unknowns at this early stage ACMI News will have updates as events warrant. Arlington's town manager is taking aim at the use of some rat poisons in an effort to cut down on the number of deaths to our precious wildlife. Sandy Pooler signed a new policy this month prohibiting the use of certain rodent poisons to all town-owned properties 
including buildings, grounds, parks, open spaces, and the public right-of-way, and shall be adhered to by all employees of the Town of Arlington, as well as third-party vendors and contractors providing services at town-owned property. You may have seen some of these black boxes around town. They are used to control rats and mice. But the poison also has a downside when nature is moving up the food chain. These rat poisons, essentially, that are called second-generation anticoagulant rodenticides. When, when we poison the rats with them, um, it basically causes internal bleeding. That is good for killing rats, but the downside of it is that if then certain predators, or, or particularly birds of prey, eat those uh, dead rats, um, they also are killed. And um, we recently had a great horned owl who um, showed signs of those anticoagulants. Um, so we're pretty sure that that was as a result of, of these uh, second generation uh, anticoagulants. So I've put out a policy banning the use of um, these rodenticides by town departments. Um, and uh, we are doing that. It's in conformity with a vote by town meeting last year asking that we no longer use uh, these rodenticides. So that's gone into effect immediately. We're starting to talk to our um, department heads about it and to the contractors that they use so that they can transition away from them. Um, we would like to be able to ban this by all contractors in town, but we uh, don't have the authority yet to do that. At, at some point, uh, the state may give that to us, but uh, at least we can take a good first step with having the town stop using these kind of rodenticides. Arlington and surrounding communities have seen a spike in rodent activity due to repeated mild winters, aging infrastructure, and improper trash and waste management. More information on this community problem can be found at arlingtonma.gov slash rodents. Again, that's arlingtonma.gov slash rodents. The town of Arlington could soon begin piloting an overnight parking program as early as this May. That according to Select Board Chair Leonard Diggins at the January 9th Select Board meeting. The proposed pilot would run for six months, allowing the board to collect crucial data that would help it decide the future of the overnight street parking ban. No word on whether the proposed pilot would be town-wide or limited to East Arlington, which has many two-family homes that were built long before the modern age of the automobile. Right now, residents are prohibited from parking on public streets between 1 and 7 a.m. for more than one hour. The pilot program would lift this ban temporarily with certain caveats. Town manager Sandy Pooler says the police and fire chiefs and the town's DPW all agree that overnight parking should be limited to a single side of a street on a given night. Many questions remain, including permits and fees for overnight parking. Do we have uh, an expense estimate for um, a permit program, what that would cost to roll out, what the offsets would be from the fees, and if this will be revenue neutral or not? Mr. Chair, I, I'll take a first crack at that, and, and then I know you and I have had some discussions about the fee issue. Uh, so we still need to do a, a cost analysis of, uh, and I mean, frankly, we have not come to a final decision about who administers this, or oh, yeah. I, I made a suggestion, but that's just a suggestion. Um, I think there's also uh, some policy discussions or considerations people will have to make about whether a fee would simply recoup whatever nominal cost there would be or whether since we could charge a higher fee because we're essentially uh, not just offering a service but offering an amenity or benefit to people um, and I know just from some of my discussions with the chair that there's been some conversations about what the appropriate level has been and so I would say before making a final determination about what the cost might be, I think there's a policy question about whether we want to charge a high fee or, or just a nominal fee uh, and then take it from, that's how I've thought about it, at least so far. Again, there are many factors to hammer out before this proposal reaches the next step. Just go to our website to see the select board meeting in its entirety. That's 
at ecmi.tv. Do you wish to see a regular building wall become a work of art? It takes just three minutes for you to say yes or no. You can help the Arlington Commission for the Arts and Culture by creating a roadmap to bring more murals like this one at 830 Mass Ave by filling out a brief survey. The Arlington Mural Plan will shape Arts Arlington's public art vision relating to murals. On the website, you'll see a brief slideshow to see several mural styles and themes you can choose from. You can also answer some questions and nominate a wall you think would provide a nice work of art for the town of Arlington. Interested? Just go to their website, artsarlington.org, and you could be taking part in bringing the next public masterpiece to Arlington. Are you hankering for a bit of creative, quirky fun? Well, every year, Mr. Bowler's mixed media art class at Arlington High creates a project where students team up to create giant and colorful puppet heads. The work are inspired by the puppet group Bread and Puppet. This year, the project took roughly two months to complete. ACMI's intern and AHS student, Tony Mueller, takes us to the high school where these creatures rear their pretty heads. Our theme is viable and invaluable in the contrast between the two. The viable things we took inspiration from were like paintings and those expensive art frames, four said paintings, and the invaluable things are like litter or trash you'd see like commonly in trash cans, like wrappers. The theme of our puppet was loud versus quiet. We started the process by making the armature, which is made out of cardboard and lots of tape, and we then paper mache over it in a couple of layers and started our painting process and adding all of the features on. And we knew that we wanted to portray our theme by using bold colors on the loud side and softer and more organic flowing colors on the quiet side. <laughs> Our theme for our puppet was old versus new, and we kind of drew inspiration from like these old sea creature monsters. We wanted to create this like this sea monster that is like really ancient, but that is like covered in new trash and like gunk from um, the new world. Ms. Robola's students usually take snapshots of the puppets, headshots if you will, and then parade these puppets through the streets of Arlington. But instead, due to inclement weather, these creative creatures are on display in the school lobby. And that'll do it for us this week here at ACMI News. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Summer Maxwell. And I'm Ben Lau. We will see you next week. Bye bye. You can always check out our latest segments and newscasts on the web at acmi.tv news. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at ACMI News. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. You'll find us at youtube.com slash ACMI News. If you have any news tips for us or wish to become a citizen journalist, we'd love to hear from you. Email us at news at acmi.tv or stop by ACMI Studio A at 85 Park Avenue.